Now let us look at the third model of international trade called the Heckscher Olin Samuelson model. This model was originally written in 1919 by Heckscher and Olin in Swedish, and this paper was eventually translated into English in 1930s. And then an American economist by the name of Paul Samuelson extended this model. And hence this model is called the Heckscher Olin Samuelson model or the HOS model in short. In uh, the models that we have looked at, that is the Smith's model or David Ricardo's model, what we had is one factor of production and the differences in productivities uh, of workers across countries became the basis for foreign trade. In those models, they never explained why productivity levels vary across countries. So in HOS model, there was a major development. What they did is, instead of looking at one factor of production, they looked at two factors of production, namely labor and capital, and tried to explain foreign trade based on two-factor model. So let us go through the assumptions of this model. Let us carefully go through the assumptions of HOS model. The reason for this is that I want to explain this model intuitively. So if you follow the assumptions, it should be very easy for you to predict the outcomes. Now, as is usual, we have assumed there are two countries US and India, and each country produces and consumes two goods, clothing and food. As compared to earlier models, in this model we assume there are two factors of production, namely labor and capital, labor being represented by letter L and capital being represented by capital uh, letter K. Now labor receives a compensation called wages, which is denoted by small w, and capital receives a remuneration called small r, or rent. The third assumption in HOS model is, and this again is important, is that US and India have access to the same set of production techniques, or there's nothing hidden, or one country doesn't have an advantage in terms of technology. Both countries have access to the same set of production techniques to produce clothing as well as food. The fourth assumption we make is production of clothing and food is subject to CRS. CRS stands for constant returns to scale. And what constant returns to scale means is if we increase all inputs, for example, labor and capital by 100% each, output will also increase by 100%. That's what constant returns to scale means. The fifth assumption is that factors of production are perfectly mobile across industries. That means same wages will prevail in, in the two industries within a country, but they are perfectly immobile across countries. So labor and capital cannot move from one country to another and this will permit us to have differences in wages and rents between the two countries. The next assumption we make is that perfect competition prevails in both goods as well as factors markets in India as well as the US and as you will recall perfect competition implies that price of a good must equal its marginal cost. The seventh assumption we make is US and India have same tastes and preferences, or in other words, the tastes and preferences can be represented by the same set of community indifference curves, or CIC in short. So both, both these countries have the same set of CICs. The eighth assumption we make is that both countries have fixed endowments of labor and capital, or they have fixed supply of labor and capital. And further, 
U.S. is relatively more capital abundant and India is relatively more labor abundant. Now just focus on the U.S. U.S. has relatively more machines per worker. So what can you say about the remuneration of wages to rent in the U.S.? Chances are relatively speaking, wages must be higher relative to rent in the US and India is labor abundant that means wages must be lower relatively speaking and rent must be higher in India in autarky and we can also make a comparison and that is <clears throat> wages divided by rent in autarky in the US and compare this to wages divided by rent in autarky in India and given this assumption this must be true or wages divided by rent in autarky in the US must be greater than wages divided by rent in autarky in India. The ninth assumption we make is that Clothing is produced using capital intensive technology and food is produced using labor intensive technology. Now US has relatively more machines per worker and what this means is since clothing is produced using capital intensive technology and US has relatively more machines, US must be producing relatively more clothing relative to food and compare this to India now food is produced using labor intensive technology and India is relatively labor abundant that means India must be producing relatively more food relative to clothing so for the purposes of HOS model though all assumptions are important 8 and 9 are particularly important to, to determine the outcome. So let us now move on to that. Now let us compare different variables in autarky in India as well as the US and what we are trying to figure out is whether the value will be lower or higher relative to India and so we'll write LO to represent lower and HI to represent higher and so let us look at wages divided by rent and we have already stated this in the previous slide that it will be higher in the case of US and lower in the case of India simply because India is relatively more labor abundant and US is relatively more capital abundant. Now as far as demand for capital divided by labor goes, since demand equals supply, we can easily state <clears throat> that in the US this will be higher and in India this will be lower given their endowments. <clears throat> now let's just skip the third one and move on to four and five what about production of clothing divided by food and just focus on the ninth and then the eighth assumption ninth assumption is clothing requires relatively more capital intensive technology and u.s is capital abundant and so from the u.s pers u.s must be producing more relatively more clothing divided by food and India must be producing lower amount of clothing divided by food. What about consumption? Since we are looking at autarky, production and consumption must be equal. So whatever applies to production of clothing divided by food in autarky in the US, the same thing applies to consumption. And the same thing applies to India as well. Now, relatively speaking, US is producing more 
clothing relative to food or the ratio C by F of production is high, higher for the US and lower for India. Now look at the autarky prices. What can you say about price of clothing divided by price of food in autarky in the US? And this must be lower because relatively speaking, US is producing more clothing relative to food. And in India, since it is producing less clothing relative to food, the price of clothing relative to food must be higher. So this is the comparison we have with respect to these variables in autarchy. In the previous table, what we have established is that in autarchy, relative price of clothing in the US must be lower than relative price of clothing in India. And since these two relative prices are different, this becomes the basis for foreign trade. And if we can find a world price, relative price of clothing in the world, which is in between these two autarchy prices in the US and India, then this becomes the basis for foreign trade. And based on what we know, US will export clothing and India will export food. Based on the assumption that is the US is relatively capital abundant and clothing requires capital intensive technology, we know that relatively speaking price of clothing divided by price of food in the US in autarchy must be lower and hence the US will export clothing. What about India? We know India is labor abundant and food requires labor intensive technology. That means PC by PF in India in autarchy must be higher and therefore India will export food. Now when US exports clothing, India must be importing clothing because we are looking at a two country case. And since India exports food, US must be importing food from India. So now we are in a position to state HOS theorem in a formal way. And that is based on all that we know, a country will export the product whose production requires the intensive use of the nation's relatively capital, relatively abundant and cheap factor. For the US, it is capital and Clothing requires intensive use of capital, so US will export clothing and India, it will be food and import the commodity whose production requires the intensive use of the nation's relatively scarce factor. For the US, labor is the scarce and the expensive factor and hence US will import food and India will import clothing. So this is the formal statement of HOS theorem. Thank you for your time.